He comes to us as one unknown, without a name, as of old. By the river he came to those men who knew him not. He speaks to us the same word, follow thou me, and sets us to the tasks that he has to fulfill for our time. He commands, and to those who obey, whether they be wise or simple, he will reveal himself in the toils, the conflicts, the sufferings that they shall pass through. And as an ineffable mystery, they shall learn who he is. Here on the great prairie, we are keenly aware of the turning of the seasons. As autumn turns to winter and winter to spring, so do the seasons of our lives turn. And in each season of life, there are certain tasks which must be accomplished if we are to grow into the next unimpeded and unimpaired. And if by circumstance or neglect, we do not resolve the issues of one season of life, these unattended issues will attach themselves to us and haunt us from one season to the next until they are resolved in some manner. St. Paul suggests in 1 Corinthians another season around the bend in the river of life, which we call death. While we do not presume to understand the full meaning of death, we do see that there are vast inequalities in life. Unless there is a life beyond death in which God will square things, in life we see through a glass darkly. But then, after life, we shall see face to face, understand each other as we long to be understood, know each other as we long to be known. Only upon the point of death shall the great mystery be revealed to us. And when we die, we shall leave behind all that we have and take with us all that we are. For the true and the righteous, death should not be feared, but welcomed as we welcome the first rays of glorious sunshine glistening on the river which flows through all our seasons for all eternity. You're feeling lucky, Perry. Today's the last day you're going to be poor. You ever consider wearing an eye patch, Dick? Get dressed. Come on, get dressed. We got shopping to do before I hit the road. 
Where you been? With my kids. Want to see my kids? I kids, right? Come on. I'm trying so hard to be good, but I just can't help myself. But you mustn't tell anybody, will you, Tom? No, I won't. Indeed, I won't. I love you. <laughs> now it's all over, but the kiss. <laughs> Oh, ain't this fun? Why, me and Amy Lawrence down by the- Amy Lawrence? <laughs> oh, Tom, how could you? Perry. We gonna be rich, Dad? You bet your sweet ass, kid. We gonna be loaded. I need one of these hunting vests. How's it look? Yeah, that's good. That look good? Yeah. 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 Can you zip that up for me? I'll... Just, just give us that. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm, I'm buying her nothing. <laughs> oh, you look at your hands. Those are pretty hands. They're soft too, huh? Yeah. Soft as the babies, you know what? Huh? <laughs> you do the dishes? I don't know. Hand, good... Well, I got a secret for you. Give me your right hand. Got it? Slip it right in there. No! 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 Get up! Put it from me! Are you buying that? <laughs> knock, knock. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, we've been out hunting. We got ourselves lost. Could we kindly use your phone, sir? <laughs> What do you do to her, Dick? What do you mean? That girl, she's acting funny. Yeah? Didn't notice. Sure, like that girl of yours tonight. And inspiration is what she was. Don't you think so, Bonnie? What happened to that good, strong arm of yours, Sadie? Got herself clobbered by one of them sacks of mail flies off the train a hundred miles per. What got into her she wants that job? I don't know. I'm the only one in town gets to work in a federal building is what? Honey, did you hear that? She's calling that outhouse a federal building. The stamps work, don't they? 
I'm back where I work. It's real cozy. Herb. Good evening, ladies. said was we wouldn't need any money after tomorrow. That's what I said on account of the truth. This guy's loaded. Most successful farmer in Kansas. Ten grand a week is what Floyd said. He gets that much out of the bank just to pay his hands. Ten thousand bucks. Dick, nobody keeps ten thousand dollars just lying around the house. Sure they do, baby. They stash it nice and neat in a private safe. Why do you have to carry all this junk around with you everywhere? Say what junk? This uh, book cost me 30 bucks. It's got every song I ever wrote in it, Dick. Plus all the maps we'll ever need. Cozumel, Dick. Now that's a place where a man can shed his clothes, put on a relaxed grin, and live like a Raja. And have all the women he can do for 50 bucks a month. Cocos Island, Dick. That's where the Spaniards picked up tons of treasure. A lot of their ships sunk too. El Dorado, man. All we gotta do is get there, buy us a boat, and ooh, follow the map. I want to date other boys, Daddy. Bobby's my best friend. Honey, all I'm suggesting is that it might be easier on you when you go off to K-State next year if you resolve this. I know Bobby's family being Catholic and us being Methodists means that there's no chance that we'll get married. I know, honey, I know. I'm not asking you to cut off all contact. A gradual break is, is all I'm saying, honey. It's for your own peace of mind, don't you understand? All right. Go get some sleep now.
No witnesses. Last time I spoke to the pro guys, they told me I better never set foot in Kansas again, and they meant it. And where were you anyway? I would have bust up over an hour. Because the old man was around, I didn't want him to see me take a gun out of the house. Christ, then he knowed I wasn't telling the truth. Known, you know it isn't English. Anyway, what'd you finally tell him? Like we said, I said we'd be gone night, tomorrow night. I said we're going to Fort Scott to visit your sister on account she's holding $1,500 for you. So is your daddy sore? Sore? Why would he be sore? Because he hates me. So does your mother. I can tell the ineffable way they look at me. Hell, they just don't like me seeing anybody from inside the walls. You know, anybody wears the old fraternity pin. You understand? I understand, I do. Yeah, they're good people. She's a real sweet person, huh? Pass on over me Red and green and tangerine Colors bright and free I hear them high and they fly by I listen to their song Singing Paris spring in April spring Singing Paris, spring in April, spring. Parrots don't sing. Talk, maybe. Holler. They sure as hell don't sing. <laughs> hey, you know what I wish? I wish it wouldn't be so damn literal. You better watch out. You're gonna become an aspirin junkie. I've been one for seven years. I got the habit in the hospital. Doctors. Yeah, they butchered my legs after my motorcycle accident. Doctors and lawyers. What do they care? You ever see a millionaire fry an electric chair? Hell, Hell no. no. There's two kinds of laws, baby. One for the rich and one for the poor. What do you mean I should wear an eye patch anyway? Well. You're gonna have to hide that eye, Dickie, in case somebody recognizes you. Ain't nobody gonna recognize us. No witnesses. Remember? Black stockings. That's what we need. And like nuns wear. You can't recognize the man with a black stocking over his face. Black is foolproof. Morning, Mr. Clutter. Morning, Alfred. How are you doing? Well, we got a sick and the baby. Uh, me and the missus been up and down with her all night. 
You have some particular work in mind for today, because I've been thinking about carrying it to the doctor, if that's OK with you. No, of course. You take the morning off. Oh, thank you, sir. See that map you and Floyd drove that clutter guy's place? Okay, now where's the office? Here. That's where the safe is. Wall safe. Do you know how to? Crack safe? Mm -hmm. Hell no. You? Uh -uh. We don't even know how to crack it, honey. He'll do it for us. Mr. Herbert W. Clutter. He'll open it, his combination. <laughs> Tell me about that nigga you killed in Vegas, Perry. I like that story. You think maybe they got some black stockings? Like extra ones for us? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> Are bad luck bunch nuns, like snakes in a dream, black spiders, only worse. No such thing as bad luck in my economy. It's either a well laid out plan or it ain't. What can I do, fill it? Yes, sir. No good letting ourselves get superstitious. We got something we can bring up beautiful here. A cinch, perfect score. And we don't need no black stockings covering our faces, neither. Because we ain't going to leave no witnesses, remember? No witnesses. No witnesses. Uh, Nancy, would it be too much of an imposition to ask you to help Jolene with the pie this morning? Cause she was uh, Mrs. Kitchen, will you hold the line for a moment, please? I, I just have to check with Daddy on something. Fine, dear. Kenyon, I smell smoke, Kenyon. Dad? Morning, honey. What's the matter? Is your mother? No, she's sleeping. I checked before I came downstairs. It's, it's just Mrs. Ketchum. She's on the phone and asked if I could teach Jolene how to bake a cherry pie. Now. That's what you get for winning all those ribbons. No, but if I say yes to Jolene, I'll miss the 4-H meeting, Dad, and I won't be able to come, even for the last part, because I have clarinet, and then I have student council, and I just don't know what to tell her. Well, it's up to you, honey. Hello? Hello. Uh, that'll be fine, Mrs. Ketchum. You can bring Jolene right over. Oh, you are a dream. Thank you so much, my dear. Oh, you're more than welcome. Bye. Bye. Kenyon, uh, Nancy's gonna stay here and teach Mrs. Ketchum's daughter how to bake a cherry pie, which means you and me are gonna go to 4-8, so you better get dressed. Oh, uh, Kenyon. What does 4 H stand for? Head, heart, hands, and health. Why'd you ask? You know. Well, I was just making sure that you know. That must mean you also know that smoking's no good for any of them, right?
So tell me. We went to the movies and we held hands. Was it scary? Oh, man. Bobby, are you out of your mind? <laughs> no. The movie. Well, Bobby didn't think so, but you know me. I'm a suck for that sort of thing. Are you having breakfast? No. Why? You're eating your fingernail, then I can tell. What's wrong? It's Daddy. When I got home last night, he started that crap again. Gosh. I wish you could understand that you love Bobby. Can't he understand that? I think he knows. It's, it's just when I say anything to him, he looks like maybe I don't love him anymore, and then all I want to do is be a good daughter and do what he wants. I'm sorry, Susie, I gotta go. It's Mrs. Ketchum and her daughter. I gotta teach her how to bake a cherry pie. <laughs> Bye. Nancy! Oh, it's so nice of you to do this. I've been telling Jolene that you've been the whole comb cherry pie champion for two years now. Everyone knows that, Mama. <laughs> we saw you in Tom Sawyer last night, Nancy. I don't know how to tell you how lovely you looked. And that part when you thought Tom was engaged to somebody else? Those are real tears in your eyes. As good as anything on TV. Well, Jolene, I better get started. Uh, I've got some shopping to do. I'll be back around lunchtime, okay? That'll be fine, Mrs. Ketchum. Um, I might have to go when we're done, but my mom will be here. Somebody in anyway. <laughs> You want to go diving for treasure? What happened to that idea? You just remember you can't swim? <laughs> yeah, we can sail all the way across the Pacific. Thanks. It's been done. Thousands of people have done it. I'm not conning you, Dick. You really go for Japan. How do you know? I was there. On R and R from Korea after it's awarded the bronze oh, star. Yeah, beautiful, gentle people, the Japanese, with manners. You really consider it. Not just out for your dough like they are here. And the women, how oh, dick the women. Man, you never had a real woman. Yes, I have. Not like I'm talking. There's these uh, baths in Kyoto. There's this one called the Dream Pool. And you go in there and you stretch out, and these beautiful knockout type girls, they come scrub you from head to toe. Yeah, yeah, you told me all about it back in grad school. So? I can't repeat myself. I know what I'm thinking is what we're gonna do with all that dough, you know? You're a grown man. Lazy. That's what you are. Too lazy to get up. Every night you end up doing in your bed what the filthiest animal will do where it sleeps. Come here. We're going to clean you up. Who? Where's who? 
my yellow bird. Taller than Jesus, brighter than the sun. She folds me in her wings and lifts me up to paradise. My avenging angel. Huh, huh, huh. You've been dreaming, Per. You just been off in one of them dreams that you carry around that wild Indian head of yours. What was it? Can I get y'all some homemade pumpkin pie? Uh, just the bell, sweetheart. You're not going anywhere with me, are you? You don't want to go to Mexico, do you? You want to buy a boat. And I know you don't want to go to Japan, do you? Now, you don't even know where we're headed at. Holcomb, Kansas. So where the hell is Holcomb, Kansas, Dick? You don't know. You don't know this farmer or where he keeps his money. You don't even know if he has any damn money. All you know is what some con told you back at the walls. What he scribbled on some silly ass map. Floyd. Psh. Floyd Wells. Wrong. Wrong on all counts, honey. I know what I'm doing. And I know the man's rich. And I know we're gonna score this time and score big. And then we're going to Mexico, baby. We'll buy us a boat. We'll sail damn thing across the Pacific Ocean all the way to Japan, if that's what you want. Back now. Who was you really looking for, Perry? Were. Who were you looking for? Never mind. It's just a dream. Just a useless dream. <clears throat> Roxy Lee's. Oh, Lord, I had to be there for a clarinet till 10 minutes ago. I'm sorry, Jolene. Oh, you go, dear. I'll keep Jolene company till her mother gets back. Bye. Bye. Mr. Clutter, you know, travels a great deal. Seems like he's never at home sometimes. But wherever he goes, he always remembers how I do it on tiny things. You set yourself down right here. This one he brought back from San Francisco. It only cost a penny, but isn't it pretty? Uh-huh. You know, little things that really belong to you. They don't have to be left behind, ever. And they're easy to carry. So you always have something of your own with you. Something that's really yours. In case you never do come back. You know, it's only a penny thing, but I think it's pretty. Me too. You keep it. Well, thank you, Miss Clutter. You're welcome, dear. Hello? Anyone home? Mom, I'm with Miss Clutter gave me. She gave that to you? Oh, how funny. Oh,
Carter. My goodness, to what do we owe this honor? Well, now, you're going to have to take that up with Al. He's the one who's bringing me here. Good afternoon, Alvin. Bess, a cherry or apple today? A rhubarb, and it's good. Rhubarb pine coffee? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'd offer you some coffee, but I know you don't drink it. Can I get you something else? Milk. And I'm going to have a piece of that pie, too, Bess. Herb, uh, I guess I'm talking to you in a somewhat official capacity. And on the other hand, I'm not really supposed to be telling you this. Well, whatever we're talking about, Al, if you wanted to keep it in confidence, perhaps we should have chosen another place. That was the right song for the right time. Well, Herb, uh, how'd you like to be Methodist Layman of the Year? I contain that wild enthusiasm of yours. Well, I'm grateful. I am. Did the bishop uh, this next week's meeting? I just wanted to give you some warning. Well, then there's still time to give it to someone else. You, for instance. Oh, not me. Besides, the bureau wouldn't approve. Oh, come on. No, Mr. Hoover approves of religion, all right, just not of any of his agents making big show-offs of themselves. Well, it's the same deal with me, Al. You and I, we help to build God's house to praise him, not to ennoble ourselves. That's exactly what I told him you'd say, which is why I wanted to save everybody an embarrassment, why I wanted to check with you first. Well, thank you. Well, being as you're standing there, why don't you just go and tell us what you think? Herb Clutter, false modesty doesn't suit you one bit. Now, you done us real proud when Eisenhower pointed you to that farm board deal. Why don't you let them give you a dinner over at the church? Hell, they wouldn't even have a building if it wasn't for you. The reward I seek is not of this earth, but in God's kingdom. Amen. Now, which disciple said that? I know it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Darn if I know. <laughs> running away from something because it scares you does not make it go away. It doesn't scare me. I just get nervous sometimes. Well, I know. You want to do well, and that's natural. Everybody, everybody gets nervous sometimes. You don't. I don't. <laughs> well, of course I do. Yeah, when? Well, I, 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 I don't know. I did. I'm not too fond of getting up in front of folks and making a speech. At church? Come on, Dad. <laughs> well, you can stand up there and talk to hundreds of people. Just nothing scares you. Of 
and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there no other has ever known Quit your Billy Graham cracker hooey, will you? You know, the trouble with you, Dick, the only song you know how to sing is Dick's hooey. Only way you know is Dick's way. I mean, what the hell am I doing here, anyway? You saying you just want to sit there and sing about Jesus? Well, what would you like me to do, Dick? Huh? Sit around all day and think of the perfect score? Plan that well laid out plan? Huh? Hey, Dick. I'm talking to you, Dick. Okay, what are we gonna find when we get there? Who are we gonna find when we get there? What are we gonna do with who we find when we get How there? the hell should I know who and what we're gonna find? Damn well better know. Before dark, Dick. Before we get there. Or else it won't be anything like a well laid out plan now, will it? Wanna know how many people there gonna be, is that it? Yeah, for one. And I wanna know if there's neighbors and how far they live from the house. I mean, you didn't get much from Floyd except that crude floor plan. Hell, you didn't even tell you where the damn safe is. You know, the ineffable happens, you know, Dick? It does. It's gonna be him, her, the kid, and a girl. The girl. How old is the girl? Sweet 16, sugar. Pretty as a fresh picked flower, as the boy says. Nancy Clutter. The kind of kid makes a boy's heart kind of hurry, is what he said. <laughs> You're not a boy, Dick. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's see. It's uh, Saturday. So the two older girls, two women sisters, might be visiting. They're married, I think. So that makes say uh, eight. And uh, my company, twelve. The only sure thing is no witnesses, right? Ain't that what I promise you, honey? No witnesses. Plenty of hair on them walls. Those walls. Yeah. Wow. Herb, come on in. How are you today? I'm good. We can convene in my office here to the left. All righty, that'd be fine. Um, Bonnie is the only one who drinks coffee in our house. Uh, I can make you some, or you could have some water. Oh, water's fine, Herb. Uh, thank you. There you go. Well, here it is, what we call a solemn moment. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's a time when a man can look back on his life and take measure of all that he's accomplished. I, I like to compare it to signing a will. It's a crossroads in some ways, except well, there's a long road ahead for you, Herb. Well, a lot of thoughts gone into this, Bob, as you well know. Yes, sir. Uh, it was almost a year ago today you first came to see me. <laughs> a year ago. <laughs> well, of course, I knew about Herb Clutter even then. You know what someone told me today? The day haircuts went to a dollar fifty, Herb Clutter writes the barber a check. <laughs> it's what they said. <laughs> it's the only way to do business, in my opinion. Those tax fellas come poking around a canceled check is a man's best friend. Cash money, I've heard tell, is for tips, and that is a fact. <laughs> now, I've got plenty to be grateful for in this life, Bob. Wonderful things. Take the kid. I've been lucky there. Here, uh, these are my older daughters. This is my eldest, Ivana, and this is Beverly. Uh, Ivana is married to Don Jarchow. I can't tell you how much I think of that boy. 
And, uh, well, Vern English, the man that my Beverly had the good sense to settle on, if anything were to ever happen to me, I could trust those boys to take full responsibility. Oh, hell, Herb, you're a young man. 48 is young. Well, no, from the looks of you and what the doctors are saying, I, I reckon we'll have you around for a few weeks longer. Well, to tell you the truth, Bob, I feel pretty good. <laughs> Optimistic. I got an idea a man could make some real money around here in the next few years. Uh, well, speaking of money, I've got the first payment on your policy. And here is the check that you've been dying to... Oh, I won't say it. <laughs> I won't say it. <laughs> there you go, Bob. But baby, I couldn't forget about you stood up broken hearted again. It's my turn now. It's okay, Perry. You go now, okay? Go on. Go now! Come on, let's go.
Have you been swimming that horse in the river, girl? Again? Sure, I am, Mr. Stockland. Babe's got to have a bath, too. Look at how happy she is. I heard your baby crying before. Yeah, she's been sick for two days now. I'm sorry to hear that. I'll bring you some apple juice from the orchard after church tomorrow. Daddy just made some. Well, thank you, Nancy. Good night, Mr. Stockland. Good night. Wondering, what is it? Fruit and vegetable mix, potato and orange juice. Ooh. <sighs> vodka. <laughs> yeah, vodka. One more, save the rest. We might could need it soon. On account of we're near the end of the damn rainbow. Didn't she look good last night? Where you been? I was taking Babe for a swim. Honey, Babe won't mind the cold, but you Babe's too fat to feel cold. You go upstairs and change before you get pneumonia. Daddy, what about tonight? No, no, no more going to movies, no more parties. Not till after Thanksgiving. You can ask Bobby Rupp to come over and listen to the game if you like. OK. I'll call him as soon as I get some dry clothes on. years, Lord. The children, everything. I'm a ghost, Lord. A ghost. Mama, don't say those things. Don't even think them. No, oh, baby, it's true. I'm, I'm too nervous to go downstairs in my own house. I don't know what's wrong. I just can't seem to keep up with any of you. Came to the play last night. And you looked so beautiful. Everybody was saying so. You're getting better. Even Kenyon can tell. We're just gonna listen to the game. Bobby's coming over, so it's just the five of us. 
Why don't you let me help you get your robe? No, 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 honey. I, I'm tired. Really. I'll make some coffee for you. Bobby likes you, and you know it. And you like him, please, Mama? Is Daddy being spiky about Bobby Rupp, baby? Is that what's bothering you? He doesn't mean to, you know? Last thing Daddy wants is to get in the way of anybody over anything. He just can't help himself sometimes. Go on. You go downstairs and enjoy yourself. I love you, Mama. Fill her up? Yeah, check the oil and water. You all right, mister? Hey, kid. You gonna fill it this year? You're right away, sir. A case of blood bubbles all of a sudden, honey? Here, hold this. Is that what it is? We're close enough to smell the damn money. Now you think it's time to chicken out? Huh? I'm talking to you. I'm not chicken. I'm talking to you. Don't you ever do that again. Nobody lays a hand on me. Not you. There's a race of men who don't fit in Their spirits can't sit still They break the hearts of all they can And run the world at will They raise the field, they roll the flood Cause I got out the curse of the ships is blood and don't know how to rest. 